We're back at the next in arena. The two Salmons waiting for the next game to start here with the rest of you guys. Of course, the two Salmons being Valdez and Wolf. We just had a couple of really crazy games. Uh, Ragnarok taking a risk in the first one. Solar China, I don't know, embarrassed him or something. Go for a kind of desperate build. Didn't work out, but then Solar came across the next map and just shreked him, man. Yeah, I mean, looking at the way that second game played out, I feel like every piece of decision-making that we saw from Solar was better. And you can't really fault Solar's decision-making the first game because it was basically a build or loss. Like, no decision was really going to save him there. And I think that is pretty indicative of Solar being the favorite in this series. Yeah, looking good, especially in that second game. The third map we are going to go into here, guys, is Runes of Ceres. So another very big map here. Let's jump into that game right now. Set number three for our ZBZ tonight. Down in the bottom left in the red, the Zerg player, one of the Zerg players at least, it is Ragnarok. And over here, cross spawns on this huge four player map in blue is Solar, the fan favorite. And this should be a really good thing. This one is not going to end dramatically mm -hmm. like the first two. I think this one might be all about harassment. We might even get a maxed out army. Um, I haven't seen a ZBZ on this map in a long time, especially not in these spawns. So it should be yeah. a real treat. Me too. You know, I, I think this should be a very good match. Um, unless someone, you know, this can some, sometimes happen in the best of five where it's like someone wants to do something crazy or we're cross spawns. But I'm going to night you because you'll never expect it. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Um, I think if there was a player to do that, it'd probably be Solar. But after winning that last one, I think he may realize that he may just be saying to himself, like, oh, I could just play my real game, play my normal game, and I'll I'll wreck this guy. I'll roll him. At least the, that's the way it felt from that last game. Yeah. Well, you know, Samsung isn't a team that's known for, like, incredibly strong Zerg players. Solar, probably the strongest they've ever known. Like, Shine used to be on their team now, the GSL Observer is like their secondary Zerg, I guess, in a way. Um, but I feel like Solar is known to be, and when I watch him play, I, I get this feeling he's like a ladder Zerg. He plays a lot of ladder, he does like safe builds, he does standard builds, he plays a lot of online tournaments, he plays every game, like it's a qualifier, like it's a ladder match. He's played in a ton of open brackets overseas, so he knows about that. Um, whereas Ragnarok plays the much more complicated, crazy, uh, uh, you know, Meta game. I'm trying to trick you. Style, kind of like Rogue does sometimes, um, and sometimes Sulky, but because he's lived in a house that was predominantly filled with Zergs and TSL. Like it was a team that had like seven Zergs and one Pros and one Terran for a long time. So I'm sure he, he understands how ZBZ works on such a fundamental level that he tries to do these sneaky strategies and tries to change the way the game is being played a little bit. Yeah, he's also in that house now. It's CJ with BL, one of the best Zerg players we had, especially at the end of the Heart of the Swarm. Hope he starts to do a little bit better as we uh, do come in here. He did win that last one against Solar, actually, in Pro League, so that was a nice win for him uh, to come back here. But, yeah, I'm sure Ragnarok uh, definitely does a lot of theoretics, I guess, theoretical just thinking about how the this matchup is supposed to work. And uh, I, I really like what you're saying, actually. I think it's true. Um, Solar definitely strikes me as this guy that just plays nonstop every day. Ladder, what have you, just anything. And uh, just gets really good because of that. Um, there's, I... a, there's some quote from Overwatch. Someone says, I think it's Zenyatta, where it's like, um, repetition is the, the way to success or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Uh, I actually play Zenyatta a lot. I should know that, but... <laughs> 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 um, and one guy in there is like, I knew it, I knew they played other games, I knew they didn't ladder Starcraft all <laughs> You guys day. caught us, I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, we played like about two hours of Overwatch today together. It was yeah. a great time. We did it, it was a lot of fun. It's a really fun game, I, as you guys should check it out. If you don't have a beta key, uh, hit me up on Twitter once the beta keys come out, because I'll probably give you one. Um, but uh, anyway, the thing is, I feel like personally, the 
mentality of a ZVZ player who does play like the ladder style is going to win more games the longer the series goes. And this isn't a best of one or a best of three even, it's a best of five. And if you play safe, you catch more of the weirdness before it happens and you end up getting ahead. So I favor Solar's playstyle. Now in this particular game, um, both players are playing similarly. We see a lair coming up a little bit later for Solar, but Ragnarok's already grabbing a Spire. He's going to be the first one to do so this game. Doesn't have a huge gas bank yet, but, you know, he's got four gases and he's building it. Yeah, uh, going to look to take those fifth and sixth. That is third base soon, for sure. Uh, this drone is actually, or rather the Ling is going to scout that Spire, whereas I don't believe Ragnarok got exactly the same scout on the Spire of Solar, so... So they're going to have a little bit of extra information. I think Spire on this map is pretty good. There's a lot of room to fly around. You can fly from the main base to the third base. It's really hard to get all your queens in one bunch, especially um, if the, the, what is it, the, the bases are not connected by cream. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's hard to, you know, get all your, your units in a bunch to try to defend that, so. Uh, I think it's a good strategy for the map. Doesn't surprise me that both players here are going for it. Oh, big attack here at these extractors with these lings. Bringing the banelings as well, very aggressively here. And it could have been much worse actually, detonating into the baneling itself, not clicking on the drones there. So only two workers go down. That could have been a disaster. Um, but killing drone workers is, or rather gas workers is important. Both players actually missing a drone in each gas respectively. That's kind of funny. Um, but a huge gas bank here for Solar uh, that he has not yet put to use. Okay, starting his Mulus now, he's got two more on the way than Ragnarok. Now, this ends up being a really fun ZVZ when both players go the same tech like this, and it's a mobile tech, Mutilus. Um I actually don't know which player I really want to favor. I want to give the edge to Solar in this playstyle, but let's see how they play this one out. Yeah, Solar had a great game. I think you and I casted it. It might have been uh, last year's Star League where Solar went up against Bial and they had Muta versus Muta. It was a really, really entertaining game. I think it was on Terraform. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, that yeah. old ancient map we used to have. Uh, but Solar definitely not a stranger to this type of play, and I would definitely favor him here. I actually remember a game on Terraform with Bial and Leenok. Where, like, Bill crushed Leenog, but Leenog tried to hold on with Investors, and it was really fun. Yeah. All right, this is actually a better Mutilus count for Solar, and he realizes it immediately, and it's going to get the side end of these Mutilus for Ragnarok. Whoa, and this actually man. is, like, almost game-ending <laughs> damage to lose this many Mutilus here. That's, you know, that's StarCraft, Wolf. The one second you're not looking, and all of a sudden you're down five Mutas, and you're playing this EVC. Ragnarok has to do something pretty dangerous and game-breaking to come back in this one. He's down six Mutas. At the moment, Solar getting his own fourth base. So is Ragnarok, though. Ragnarok knows he needs to go in Fester's ASAP. He's already working on that now. His infestation pit is on the way, but he needs to survive while being lower in Mutilus for a little bit longer. That's important that he's taking this fourth base early. And he is going to have to continue to make some Mutilus, which is expensive, but he needs to get those, basically those um, seventh and eighth gases up as soon as possible to support those investors. And, uh, oh, nice defensive bandling hit there. Mutilus and a few queens going to clean up the same sort of counterattack. But here comes a bigger attack from Solar. More Mutas and also the Ling's still yeah. on the ground here. He's 30 army supply up right now. I love that Solar's doing this. He's saying, okay, I'm not going to let you go into Investors. He knows what the next step here is for Ragnarok. So he's saying, I just got to attack you right now. I have the better army. I can take out your fourth base and get a big advantage from that. You can see that Ragnarok doesn't even try to fight that army. He knows that he can't fight until he gets Investors out. No, there's not even any reason to transfuse the hatchery. It's going to waste his queen energy. There's no way he could save it. You're absolutely right. He needs those Investors. Three of them, four of them, in fact, about to pop out three in the first set, one a little bit later. Um, they don't have pathogen glands, so they will take a little bit longer to actually get out and hit those fungals. So, uh, you know, he just needs to delay. All of this time, though, Solar is starting his own infestation pit. He's getting massive, massive Mutilus counts up. Um, and he's 31 to 22 Mutilus right now. He has his 7th and 8th gases online and mining, which means he can transition to investors faster. And even, you know, switch to roaches or whatever he wants later on. Oh, Solar even coming in the back here. There looks like there was two spores trying to get up there, but Solar does cancel them. And uh, some units actually trying to harass here at the fourth base. Looks like that queen should be safe. 
These Ling's actually just going to back off, knowing that they kind of missed their chance here. Solar going to start his hive as well. Uh, not even building any investors just yet, I don't believe. No. I would like Sticking to on that Muta tech for now. Yeah, I would like to see if Ragnarok get Burrow for these investors. This is too <laughs> obvious, you know? That he's never going to fly into that. The Grey Copper just scream and go crazy, but look at this going. Well, I mean, if he got hit by that, that would be a huge, <laughs> huge mistake. Like, low master's level mistake, okay? Solar has dealt with this a million times, and he's building this Mulus count fully aware that Ragnarok is going this tech route. Um, and he's just going to continue to bully him around. He's got still an 11 Mutalist count lead. Oh, I love this big Ling run by into that third base. There is no defense here at all. He's not even using all of his links. <laughs> yeah, half of them weren't even going. We got a fungal over here. But Solar just going to split up half of his Mutas and try to attack this fourth base. Doesn't even look like Ragnarok has the answer to stop that. Uh, okay, here comes the Chain Fungal. I was about to say, he should have chained them together a long time ago. This is going to be a huge Whoa. win here. That was... That was a mistake we were waiting for. Um, still surprised that it happened. Ragnarok didn't even get the first chain fungal, but Solar was really not paying attention there. He was microing his lings like crazy, I suppose. Um, continuing to run by here, even gonna maybe grab some investors. That would be huge. That's really expensive. He's gonna get one investor here. The other one is on the run. You can see that Ragnarok is just trying to click onto that one investor. There's no reminding here at the fourth base either. Wow, we're gonna see Ultralis <laughs> Valdez. Going for Ultralisk Viper. Wow. Um, obviously, a Parasitic Bomb is going to be quite powerful versus a high Mutalisk count if he can hit it off. Yeah, and look at how many investors there are here for uh, for Ragnarok. That's not going to do much of anything against a very big Ultra Army outside of throwing out a bunch of infested Terrans and hoping to mess with the AI and block them. But yeah. that's about it. So that could be just a huge amount of gas that will be wasted if Solar can get to that. Uh, Ultra Tech, which it looks like he can. I mean, this is what we were talking about. This is a giant map. Both these players have tons of time to go for uh, their specific builds and compositions. You know, uh, there's a lot of different ways that players have tried to deal with Ultralis and ZBZ. Um, funny as it is, one of them is actually Swarm Host. Uh, it's pretty rare, but it might actually uh, come into play. Uh, although, thinking about it, I guess in the way they work in Legacy of the Void, it wouldn't be as good. I'm thinking about more Heart of the Swarm answers, right? Yeah. But Rude Lords are pretty tough to pull off when your opponent already has somewhat of an air superiority with his own Mutalist and then the Vipers. So we may see Ragnarok just get his own Ultras. I mean, he's already going into 1-1 upgrades for them. He's also getting Burrows, so he can maybe harass with his Investors. We see late game on this map sometimes in ZBZ. Investors burrowing around like uh, sharks underneath the water, coming in, dropping a ton of Infested Terrans, or fungling some of those workers to actually get ahead in that way. Ragnarok trying to go for another run by here. Solar looked like he was sending his own links out there. Had just uh, enough there to stop the run by of Ragnarok. We do see these Vipers in the air. Solar is on the hunt. Yeah, Solar also has the better Ling upgrades on the ground. He has Adrenal Glands and he's got 2-2 two -two on the way. So uh, Adrenal Glands make a huge difference in Legacy Void. He needs to drop some fungals here. Okay, nice fungal there. A lot of those links getting very, very low and with uh, about six or seven queens over there. I don't, I don't think that kind of run by is going to work. He's really going to group up with the rest of his army. You see Ragnarok has identified that Solar is going for this uh, space in the middle of the map here. Oh, look at this. So powerful to actually have these Vitas here to control this watchtower. But here come the Vipers. Parasitic Bomb. If you thought splitting versus Fungals was hard and crazy to watch, <laughs> wait until you see this. <laughs> yeah, and Solar's got a big chunk of Mutas himself. In fact, nearly the same amount, 27 to 28 in Ragnarok's favor. Yep, and there are a few Ultras on the ground to try to clean things up. Ragnarok is making four of his own. He's already pre-splitting these Mutas. He knows what's coming. Here come the Ultras. They're actually going to try to zone out these Investors. That's exactly what they're doing. Even just one Ultra in the front. A really nice fungal there onto a big chunk. The Ainling's connecting here. <laughs> oh, and actually hitting a few Mutalists where the Parasitic Bombs are not. He doesn't have enough energy. There's one, and oh my god! Get him out of there! Oh no! It's yeah. like Irradiate on crack! Oh! He's, wow, he's really having trouble splitting his Mutas here, Ragnarok. He just got a really nice fungal there on a bunch of the Mutas in the back, but will he have enough to stop this attack? I, I don't, don't think, think so. so. He lost his hatchery already as well, and he may win this Mutas battle, actually, but look at how much money Solar has. He's already remaxing these Ultras. Where's, what's the answer? There's he nothing have any on answer. the ground. This is exactly what they're talking about. Those Infestors got a lot of nice fungals, which allows 
Ragnarok to win that war in the air, but it just doesn't matter. He's going to lose two hatcheries here. And Mutas are not going to kill these ultras fast enough. This one ultra like could have killed the other one, but just ran away. That's a bit sad, but looks like he's going to try to counter harass here. Um, but one more good parasitic bomb if he doesn't split. <laughs> it's like he's never yeah, seen that, the ability that. before. <laughs> he was really caught off guard, which is funny because he had his own Vipers. I didn't even see any parasitic bombs go on to... Solars. Yeah, you I don't know, know if he had he enough energy just, or something, but... Maybe he was just a bit flustered in the moment. I really don't know. Oh, this one investor is coming up. Oh, buddy, what are you looking uh, at? Oh, come on. Oh, that get one your head investor. Get the game, investor. What the hell? Wow. Oh, there's two bungles going down. And oh, ho, ho, ho. that's exactly what we were waiting for. Huge parasitic bombs. Nice splits now, but not enough in the air, actually, for Solar to clean this up. Like, uh, right now, right now, I was like, oh, that's all the, the Korean process is complaining to try to go air style versus Smear talking about. That's pretty strong. Um, <laughs> well, these Ultras doing nothing. GG. GG. Solar's on match point now. Way out playing those engages. And always had a tech advantage. Always had an upgrade advantage. And uh, I gotta say, looking to be the stronger player in this matchup by far. Yeah, uh, especially now that we got our first game that wasn't crazy, wild and crazy. Um, it's, it really did lead in the favor of Solar, just to speak the truth here. I think Ragnarok is definitely getting a bit flustered. He said it himself, he's trying to go for his first big title over here in his interview. But uh, he's going to have a hard time getting through this Zerg player. You can see, looks like Sky there in the booth just talking to him, saying, hey, you know, just calm down, you got this. You took one map off of him. You got to win two in a row, though. Yeah. I think it is possible. But looking at Ragnarok's face and looking at these games, I would bet big money on Solar. I don't do betting in StarCraft. No. I don't do that. <laughs> but I'm just saying I would, okay? Like, my my vote goes to Solar here. Like, he Yeah, like, if we had to do predictions right now, I'm like, yeah, okay, Solar big time. But, uh, yeah, I'm like, everyone says Solar. Like, everyone in the crowd, like,